I recently moved back to my hometown and knowing that I was going to be moving to my hometown, I was going to, I haven't lived here in like over 10 years. So I knew that I was going to need to make people aware of who I was and like, you know, what services I offered whenever I was moving back. So what I did was I actually created a Facebook ad. It's like, I think I paid like 15 bucks or something like that. And um, I have like a, a Facebook page and this is an, the one thing that you could do is like create a Facebook page for your photography stuff. And then if you already have some photos that you can post there, you can go ahead and throw them on there. And, and this is just what worked for me. I did a $15 ad um, and I just, you can go in there and select like people that are most likely to message you or so on and so forth. It's probably changed now, but, um, but you could go in there to like create a Facebook ad and then have it, you know, reach so many people in a certain area. And through that, I actually got three wedding clients and uh, a few people that reached out to me to just do basic photo sessions. Um, so that was like really easy because like, as far as like just me, something simple, I paid $15. There was stuff that I had to pay for to be able to rent lenses and things like that for the photo shoots. But um, ultimately I took that $15 and I made a whole lot more than $15. So, you know, it's one of those things that you can do. That was what worked really well for me whenever I was first getting started was, uh, I did that once I started to, you know, go out and take some photos. I, I worked for free at first. That's one of those things that if you don't have any photographs, definitely recommend working for free because even though you're working for free, you're not, and I talked about this a little bit in my last video, is you're you're not actually working for free. You're that, you know, the the content you're getting for your portfolio is worth a whole lot more. So it's gonna help you build those things. So if you're if you don't already have something, I recommend working for free. If you do have stuff, Facebook ads or, you know, that was super helpful for me. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do that, but that was really helpful. Now, through that, um, the next portion was like, I whenever I went and, you know, did these photo shoots, I established relationships with the client. If you deliver a really good product for your client, so their photos are really happy with them, they're they're happy with the experience that they had whenever the, you were, they were doing the photo shoot, that's super key because um, the customer service, you know, it's one of those things that they... They automatically, when you're when someone hires you to be their photographer uh, for whatever it is, let's say for example, let's do holiday photos, they expect you to know how to take photographs. Um, that is something that's just like this is your profession. They're paying you to do this thing. They expect you to know how to do that. What what they don't really expect is like, uh, or maybe they, I don't know necessarily. That's probably not the best way to say it, but like they you can surprise them with the customer service that you are, you can offer. They, you know, so think about things like this. Um, don't, you know, you want to be polite, professional. Those are like a given you, those, those have to happen, but you could also, you know, make it worth their while. So tailor, like, however you do things whenever you are like going and doing your photo shoot. So I, I'll do prompts and I prompt, you know, I, I try to shoot candid style photos. Some people prefer like traditional portraits, for me, I prefer to shoot candid style photography. So I want them to enjoy those special moments and I give them a really good brief at the beginning of the, the, the photo session. Um, so they have a good understanding of like what my style is and, and I try to make it worth their while. I want them to have fun during their photo shoot. So, you know, it's not just the experience of getting their photographs take, or, or I'm sorry, there's not just getting the, having the experience of t having their photos delivered to them. They actually enjoy the experience of getting their photos taken. You know, a lot of guys, to include myself, I'm not the biggest fan of having my picture taken whenever I go and have photos done. If you can, you know, make that enjoyable for the guys or, you know, some some girls out there may not like to have their photos done either. So if you can make it enjoyable for everyone that's involved, if, especially if you work well with kids, you're, you are going to have, you're going to almost be a shoe in for like repeat uh, clients. I've had a few people, even like once recently for the wedding that was like, you are going to be our like go-to photographer for all of our things. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. I, you know, I, I love to hear that. And I'm so happy, so grateful and so happy to help you. So it's one of those things that, you know, want to make sure that you deliver and, and have that good customer service with your clients because you could get repeat business over that. And not only that, um, if, if you're not taking photos for them at the next holiday or whatever, maybe they refer you to someone else. Like, or maybe, or I'm sorry, you get referred to one of their friends. I've actually had... Uh, one of the last weddings I shot, the bride's sister was like, I'm really into photography. Do you, would you be interested in doing like photography lessons and stuff? I had a good relationship with the bride and the groom 
And they were, they felt like I was like absolutely, you know, it's one of those things that if if I have the time, you know, to be able to do so, I would be more than happy. And that's just another way that you could try to have some sort of revenue coming in. So I know I'm getting a little bit off, you know, off what this video is supposed to be about, but delivering a good experience for the client outside of just the photos that you deliver could be, you know, an opportunity for you to be able to grow your portfolio even further. Another way is so. I went by moving back to my hometown. I don't know if you live in your hometown. If you don't live in your in your hometown, maybe you have friends in your in your like where you're living at currently. But utilizing the people that are around you, so growing this like uh, my portfolio and stuff, and posting photographs and things on social media. My mom, like I, like all moms are gonna be do. She's like she's my biggest fan, and so she's always telling her friends that I do photographs and stuff like that. And I actually had one of my mom's friends daughters reach out to me and ask to do a holiday session photos that she wanted to take him for a Christmas card so that's something that I did and and from that she had a friend that she referred me to and so I was able to take even or to get another client from that so word of mouth is so powerful um, and you could always just give out your business cards that's another thing like you don't have to do it there's all kinds of ways you don't have to give a physical business card sometimes a physical business card is is uh is valuable depends on the the type of person um nowadays they have like a little thing that you can do with your phone where you can just like straight up give somebody your contact information that way however you want to do it but a physical uh every wedding that i shoot I always try to have some business cards that i'll give out to the dj i'll give them out to you know the, the wedding planner whoever is um a vendor at that wedding so that's another way to be able to do that um, other ways that you can grow your or your photography portfolio, you, you can do street photography. You can go out and you can ask people. It's like you, you don't have to be weird about it. You can just be like, "Hey, I'm uh, you know trying to you know pursue photography as like a full time business type of thing, and I was wondering if I could take your photograph real quick to have in my portfolio." Some people will be like, "No, no, no, I don't, I'm not about that," and then some others will be like, "Yeah, sure, go ahead and take the picture." Um, just I just feel it out. You you'll kind of know whether or not if it's a, a good situation or not and or if somebody's going to be willing to take a photograph uh, just don't be a creep about it I, that's just my opinion on it um and so other ways that you that i would if if i'm trying to grow my uh photography portfolio is that you can just walk into local businesses um, local businesses are looking for things all the time like they're looking for stuff for their social media um, all businesses out there nowadays um, believe it, like they're they're wanting to leverage social media, so you can go in and just take interior shots, or you can walk into the counter. Don't just go walk in with your camera and just start snapping away. You might freak somebody out, but you can just walk up and be like, "Hey, um, my name is whatever, and I'm a photographer, and I was wondering if I could take some photographs of the interior facility so you can have it to post on social media." Um, and they're like, "Yeah, absolutely," or, or you know, they may be like, "No, we don't do anything like that," or you have a conversation. You can go in there and be like, do you have a marketing department? Or you have a director of marketing that I can speak with? Um, you can talk to the person at the counter or you can talk to the director of marketing or you talk to someone that in management. But I guarantee you they're going to want that because there's like if they can get some co free content, that would be something that they're going to want to take advantage of. And you just, just let them know that you'll be using it for your photography portfolio. And now you have like a portfolio for product photography. Um, and then if you you don't want to go and do other things like another thing you could do is reach out to local real estate agents um, and you call all of them. Um, I know it sounds weird and you know some sometimes we don't have the time to do these things, but I guarantee you there's some real estate agents out there that are in need of like they're looking for photographers to be able to help with their business. And if they if you like you go out and you just you have to do you know you want you'll want to do your research as far as like how to take the best photos that you can for. Uh, photographers but I have a family member that's actually she's a real estate agent and if I you know it's one of those things I didn't uh, take advantage of it or I didn't actually go out and I say take advantage of, I didn't take advantage of the opportunity to be able to go and take those real estate photos because I didn't necessarily need them but you know if you have someone that you know is a real estate agent reach out to them be like hey can I do some interior home photographs and then that's your foot in the door to be able to do real estate photography and that's a whole business in and of itself and opens the doors to other things um, other things that you can do is just like, it just depends on like what your, your niche is as far as like what you want to do. Um, and I think that I don't want to tell anyone that like you should, like, this is what you have to do. I, I, what I did is I just kind of 
went out and just took photographs and I continue to take photographs of the things that I enjoy photographing the most. Sometimes I'll do like help out. Like I'm perfectly capable of doing uh, product photography, but it isn't something that I just like go out and actively seek. But building your portfolio is essential to like having something to show your work as a photographer. So those are just a few of the ways that like, these are things that the opportunities that uh, presented itself to me in the last year. Um, now, it's one of those things that it is don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen overnight that all these opportunities like just lay themselves out and just like, hey, there's your, no, what you have to do is you got to you know, just like anything, you have to be willing to put in the work. And once you have mastered your camera and you feel like you are confident being, to be able to do these things, don't be afraid to get outside of your comfort zone because that's whenever so many opportunities are going to present themselves. Like, you can set yourself up by doing things, um, but sometimes things are just gonna happen out of nowhere. Um, so always be willing to put your work out there and be good to your clients. And a lot of the things like word of mouth will do a lot of the work for you. So that's that's just a couple of ways that I've been able to grow my por uh, photography uh, portfolio in 2023. Now I know some of them, like I didn't actually go out and take photographs of like the real estate stuff, but those were opportunities that were presented to me in ways that I could have also grown. So I just wanted to, I, I wanted to throw that in there as well, just so that you all, you have an additional thing that or you, you could take advantage of if it's helpful. All right, that's it. Um, you know, if you didn't already check out this video right here, um, I wear a breakdown if I were to start photography or videography over in 2023, 2024, whatever you want to call it. If I had to start over, this video is going to have all the information of what I would do. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.